Hey everyone, happy Saturday. So I did some research. I found out this amazing source to be able to build your own web-based application backed up by GitHub. And you're able to get this app deployed to allow a user to upload any PDF document and build a question and answer chatbot around it. So in this episode, we're gonna dive in and we're gonna show you guys a little demo of what that process looks like. But before we get started, just as a disclaimer, I wanna say up front that all of the documentations, all of the code repositories used in this video is completely publicly available. It's not like I'm taking anybody's secrets and posting online, right? And then in addition, I also wanna say that the opinion and content in this video is complete based on my experience and my experience only. It doesn't really represent any third party, any company or any legal entities. So with that being said, let's jump right in. So let me take your attention to the left hand of the screen. Here is what the app looks like. Let me comment that out just for a sec. This is the user interface. You have an area where you enter your API key from OpenAI website, and then you have an area to upload your PDF documents. And down here, you have a little text box allowing you to enter your questions. So that is essentially what a user interface looks like. Uh, there's something on the margins. You can give a thumb up, thumb down, uh, you can check the details, check the score, so on and so forth. But really, the most important piece is you're able to drop that PDF document, and then you're able to ask a question. Now, I also want to show you guys the code a little bit, but we probably won't be able to do a code walkthrough in this video. I will take that in another video. You can find a source code here, which you click on it. It's going to go to this GitHub repository. And I just want to say, I want to give full credits to this person. Uh, he actually created this repository in the beginning. I just took his code online and I ran the code and it worked. So this web-based application is backed up by this package called Streamlit. Streamlit is a super interesting package. It essentially allows you to build any web-based application and get deployed instantly. And if you go to streamlit.io, this is their main website. You can go to gallery and there you go. You have a list of different variety of apps. And that most of them are surrounded by ChatGPT related applications, which I thought is pretty interesting and pretty cool. So let's come back to the repository a little bit. Here we have a requirements and that requirements file is exactly where you should start with. So you open your IDE, I use VS code, create your own virtual environment, install all the packages from requirements file. And there you go. All the required dependencies are there. And let me take you to the source code a little bit. The main source code is GUI.py. And that is a source code that back up that front end, that user interface. So I'm not going to go through this right now, but we're going to do it in another video. So let's get back to the fun part. You enter your API key, which I already did. Now we're going to download a PDF document and drop it up there. So this is a PDF document that I found on clinicaldraws.gov. So that's what I did. I went online, I found a PDF document. In this case, it's a clinical trial protocol. It's a study protocol that essentially documents what that study is. So you can see that it's 13 pages. Uh, the first page says study protocol, says version. Uh, here lists out a couple of study sites, principal investigators, so on and so forth. And then when you go into page three, here you have a synopsis. In a synopsis, you can talk about name of study, study objectives, study design. And here I can see that study objective is to evaluate the efficiency and safety of kermesine in the patients with 2019 COVID pneumonia. So it's somewhat COVID related. It's a pretty important protocol study. And here's the text format. Now we talked about in previous video that you can create a question answer pair. You can create a corpus. You can create a dictionary around the PDF document. And that's precisely what's happening here. Except that in this user interface, it made that process a little bit more easier. So anybody can upload any PDF and as long as it's less than 200 megabytes, uh, you'll be able to scrape that PDF completely in the back end and ask any questions about it. So that's a PDF I use. I'm gonna slide this window to the right just a little bit and then I'm gonna drop this PDF into this UI. So once this is uploaded, 
I can then start to ask them questions. So let's start from first page and just ask some simple questions. Here maybe we have study sites. So here's a question that's related to the protocol, right? Something very easy, first page, let's take a look. So I can say, what are the study sites? And I say, get answer. And boom, there you go. It says that the study sites are listed on page one and include Beijing Yuan Hospital, Capital Medical University, Shenyang Tongliang Group, Institute of Medical Biotechnology, Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences, and so on and so forth. So this information is paraphrased using ChatGPT based on the context scraped from this PDF on the spot. So the user doesn't really have to clean up the document and create a question answer pair and create a corpus in a nice neat way. The user just need to upload the document and all that stuff is taken care of in the back end with the click of a button. And I can kind of verify that this is a correct answer because here study sites, we have Beijing Yuan Hospital, Capital Medical University, Shenyang Tongyang Group, you know, these are all the correct names. So I know that this is a somewhat correct answer. And if you want to take this to another level, you can check out a similarity score between uh, this paragraph that you produced in front of a user and the actual ground truth. So you can go into the back end and check out what is the ground truth, what is the context that is scraped from this PDF, and what the similarity score between those two paragraphs. And based on these words here and what's coming up in this paragraph, I can tell you that they are pretty similar. So let's give another shot. Let's say down here you have principal investigator. Uh, let's say I'm too lazy to read this entire PDF. I want to know who the principal investigator is. So let me ask a question. Who is the principal investigator? Now this is interesting because I actually spell this principal incorrectly, right? Because here on the documentation, it's principal as P-A-L, where I spell it as P-L-E. So let's take a look at that. And there you go. The answer says the principal investigators, director Jin Ronghua, and the parenthesis page one. So that answer actually did come from page one. That's exactly where I get the question. Principal investigator, director Jin Ronghua. So those names look exactly correct. And there you go. Now you kind of get the idea what this is doing, right? It's a pretty efficient, as long as you have a PDF less than 200 megabytes, this app would be able to take care of that for you. You might have to wait a little bit for the question, if the answer happened to be a long answer, then perhaps the processing time is a little bit longer. Let's try a different one just for the sake of curiosity. Let me scroll down and let me say, hey, what's the study objective? Because that sounds something important. And maybe I don't want to read all 13 pages. I can just start asking questions. What are the study objectives? Get answer. And then boom, there you go. Here, the answer says, the study objectives are to evaluate the efficiency and safety of keramosin in the patients with 2019 NCOV pneumonia. Establish the criteria for clinical cure and the early predictive model of COVID-19 progression. And parenthesis here says page two. So there you go. I hope this episode sheds some light on how to query information from documents in a very automated and user-friendly manner. And also want to share with you guys that this is going to be the future for now. These apps are all going to be extremely available if they're not already. And then it's going to open up a whole new wave of query and search engine in the future. Based on everything I've seen, of course, Google Chrome and Microsoft Bing are still the two dominant ones. But in the future, I believe that these two search engines will start to incorporate many of these tools to make their search capabilities much more complete. And me personally, I particularly enjoy investigating this kind of application because A, I like it, B, I do believe that this is a much more efficient way of querying information from documentations. As my previous video suggested, the financial documents such as annual report is 300 pages, right? I'm not gonna go read 300 pages. If there's some sort of query machine, a chatbot that allow me to upload those documents and just start asking some questions, questions that I'm interested in, right? Then that will allow me to jump right in to the conversation and get started with the important concepts. Then me have to 
go fishing through contents, index, uh, which page is what keywords, right? So this kind of framework take care of that for you. And I believe that is the future. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, give a like and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.